everyone, I'm Innes and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I'm going to be sharing my TBR list for nonfiction November 2017. Nonfiction November aims to encourage people to choose more nonfiction reads than they normally would during the month of November, and it's hosted by Olive from A Book Olive, whose channel I've been following for a long time now and really enjoy all her content, and Gemma from Nonfic Books, who I'm just discovering now as a result of her hosting Nonfiction November. So with regards to my personal history with nonfiction, when I was younger I really enjoyed reading children's nonfiction, and I remember being annoyed that my childhood library had a rule that you couldn't take out more than three books at a time on the same nonfiction topic, and I was always trying to argue that it was a slightly different topic and I should be able to take out more than three books on any given topic. So when I was younger I really enjoyed reading nonfiction, but for the past seven years or so during my bachelor's degree and then my master's degree, I have hardly read any nonfiction, like maybe one or two books a year. I found that my academic workload was heavy enough that if I had time to read for pleasure, I was wanting to escape into a story that was as different as possible from my course readings. So my nonfiction interests kind of got uh, set aside for the time being while I focused on school and then on uh, fiction. And now that I'm finally done with grad school and graduated, uh, I would like to get back into reading nonfiction more regularly and add that back into my reading repertoire. So I figured Nonfiction November was the perfect place to start. There are four prompts or challenges set out by the host this year, and they are home, substance, love, and scholarship. So there's just these single word prompts and we can choose any book that fits into those. And so I've chosen a book for each category. For the first category, home, I'll be reading The Book of Huga, The Danish Art of Contentment, Comfort, and Connection by Louisa Thompson Britz. And I'll read the back. Huga is a Danish word, but a universal feeling of being warm, safe, comforted, and sheltered, an experience of belonging to the moment and to each other. Huga anchors us, reminding us to slow down, to connect with place and with one another, to dwell and savor rather than rush and spend. When you curl up by the fire with a blanket or have a simple meal with friends, that is Huga. When you acknowledge the sacred and the secular, or focus on people rather than things, or when you express love through small gestures, that is Huga. The Book of Huga is an invitation to welcome abundance and contentment into your life. And it's just a really beautiful looking book. Like, it has all these uh, pictures in it, different uh, ways you could arrange your house, uh, candles, cozy blankets, uh, lots of inspirational home decor photos. And I just moved into a new apartment uh, at the beginning of July, so I'm still settling into this to this place, and I'm really enjoying uh, kind of getting a chance to decorate an uh, apartment for the first time in my life. So I thought that this would be a really good selection for home, because it's just an example of how to kind of establish how to establish a home that feels like home and I really want to cultivate that homey feeling in my own home, so I'm hoping that the Book of Huga will help me do that. So for the substance category, I chose The Botany of Desire, A Plant's Eye View of the World by Michael Pollan. And I don't have a physical copy with me today because I'm reading it uh, as an ebook from my library, so I'll read the description here. Every school child learns about the mutually beneficial dance of honeybees and flowers. The bee collects nectar and pollen to make honey, and in the process, spreads the flower's genes far and wide. In The Botany of Desire, Michael Poulin ingeniously demonstrates how people in domesticated plants have formed a similarly reciprocal relationship. He masterfully links four fundamental human desires, sweetness, beauty, intoxication, and control, with the plants that satisfy them, the apple, the tulip, marijuana, and the potato. In telling the stories of four familiar species, Poulin illustrates how the plants have evolved to satisfy humankind's most basic yearnings. And just as we've benefited from these plants, we have also done well by them. So who is really domesticating whom? So I chose this book for the substance category because it's dealing with uh, plants, which are a substance, and food, and drugs, and different ways that humans and plants interact. And in the past couple months, again, to do with decorating my home, I've really got into uh, house plants and the beauty of plants. So I thought this would be an interesting look at how, how humans and plants have interacted through history and these four, uh, I guess, key species that have had a big impact on, on humankind. So for the love category, I chose a graphic memoir. I chose Something New, Tales from a Makeshift Bride by Lucy Kneesley. 
This book, I'm still waiting for it to arrive. I've ordered it. It should be here in a week or two. So again, I don't have a physical copy to show right now, uh, but I will read the description. A funny and whip-smart new book about the institution of marriage in America told through the lens of her recent engagement and wedding. The graphic novel tackles the all-too-common wedding issues that go along with being a modern woman. Feminism, expectations, getting knocked over the head with gender stereotypes, family drama, and overall wedding confusion and chaos. So obviously this ties into the love category because it's about weddings and marriage, love, engagement, and all the drama that comes with planning a wedding. So I'm recently engaged myself and planning a wedding for May, and so I definitely can relate to some of the issues that uh, it, the, this graphic memoir promises to discuss, and so I think it'll be a really interesting and funny look at love and marriage. And for the last category, scholarship, I chose Dead Aid by Dembisa Moyo. Um, and I'll read the back of this book. A national bestseller, Dead Aid, unflinchingly confronts one of the greatest myths of our time. The billions of dollars in aid sent from wealthy countries to developing African nations has helped to reduce poverty and increase growth. In fact, poverty levels continue to escalate and growth rates have steadily declined, and millions continue to suffer. Debunking the current model of international aid promoted by both Hollywood celebrities and policymakers, Dembi Samoyo offers a bold new roadmap for financing development of the world's poorest countries. Much debated in the United States and the United Kingdom on publication, Dead Aid is an unsettling yet optimistic work, a powerful challenge to the assumptions and arguments that support a profoundly misguided development policy in Africa. And it is a clarion call to a new, more hopeful vision of how to address the desperate poverty that plagues millions. So I chose this for the scholarship category because it is a book that was assigned to me during my studies that I never fully read. I read a chapter or two for my class, but I never read the whole thing. And I think it's a really fascinating and provocative take on, on aid politics. Dambisa Moyo is a Zambian scholar, and in this book she really challenges a lot of the popular conceptions about how aid and humanitarian intervention should work on the African continent. And so I'm really looking forward to, to diving into that book and finally reading the whole thing cover to cover. So those are the four books that I'm really excited to read during Nonfiction November 2017. Let me know if you've read any of them yourselves in the comments. Thanks for watching and until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book.